Hi, this is Luca. Welcome to a new research paper summary by MartechPost.com. Today we are going to talk about the SimSwap, an efficient framework for high fidelity face swapping developed by the researchers of the Shanghai Jiaotong University. The purpose of face swapping is to transfer the identity of a surface into a target face, while preserving the attributes of the target face, like expression, posture and lighting. A face swapping framework should have the following capabilities. The framework should work on arbitrary faces. The identity of the result face should be close to the identity of the source face. The attributes of the result face, like the expression, should be consistent with the target face. The framework proposed in this paper extends an existing face swapping architecture called deep fakes. The architecture of deep fakes consists of two parts, an encoder ENC and two identity-specific decoders DECS and DECT. During the training stage, the encoder ENC takes as input the source images and restores them through the decoder DECS. The same procedure is applied to the target images. The encoder ENC takes as input the target images and restore them through the decoder DECT. Hence, during the test stage, a target image will be given as input to the encoder ENC. Then, the decoder DECS will mistake the target image for a source image, producing in this way a result image with the identity of the source image and the attributes of the target image. Unfortunately, this approach has a scalability problem. The encoder ENC extracts the target features which contain both the identity and the attributes information of the target image. Then, the decoder DECS has to generate an image with the target features and the source's identity. This means that the identity information of the source image must be integrated into the weights of the decoder DECS. So, this decoder can be applied only to a specific identity. To overcome such a limitation, the researchers of SynSwap improved the architecture by adding an additional module after the encoder. Given a target image, it is passed through the encoder to extract its features. Then they have to replace the identity information in the features with the identity information of the source face while keeping the attributes information in the features unchanged so they directly modify the whole features vector. As we will see later, this process is obtained thanks to the ID injection model. The researchers use a training loss that encourages the network to learn implicitly which part of the features should be changed and which part should be preserved. So the ID injection model has to change the identity information in the features towards the identity information of the source face. The module is composed of two parts. The first part consists of the identity extraction. It uses a phase recognition solution to extract the identity vector from the source image. The second part is the embedding part, where they use nine ID blocks to inject the identity information of the source image into the features. Note that these ID blocks are just a modified version of the residual blocks of the famous ResNet architecture. Shortly, the idea of residual blocks is that the input of the block is added to the output of the last layer of the block. This creates a skip connection that speeds up the training process. After the injection of identity information, we pass the modified features through the decoder to generate the final result image. The decoder just focuses on restoring the image from the features. The identity modification is ended only by the ID injection module, so SimSwap can be applied to arbitrary identities. During the training process, the system extracts the identity from result image. Then, an identity loss is used to minimize the distance between the identity of the source image and the identity of the result image. However, the minimization of the identity loss can lead to the overfitting problem, so the network will tend to generate only images with the source's identity while losing all the target's attributes. To avoid this event, the researchers use the adversarial training. A loss function is added to fool a discriminator so that it will not be able to distinguish whether the images it receives as input are real or fake, that is, generated by the network itself. 
we have another problem to tackle. As we have already said, the identity of the result phase should be close to the identity of the source phase, while the attributes of the result phase, like the expression, should be consistent with the target phase. However, since we are directly changing the features vector that contains both identity and attribute information of the target image, the attributes information will be likely affected by this process, even if it should remain unchanged. To prevent this problem, the researchers proposed to use the weak features matching loss. Since the attributes are high semantic data, this information will be extracted by the last layers of the discriminator. So the weak feature matching loss is only applied to these last few layers so that it minimizes the difference between the high-level features learned from the target and the result images. In this way, the network will implicitly learn how to preserve the attributes of the target image also in the result image. Here, you can see what we can obtain by using SceneSwap to transfer the identity of a source image into a target image, while preserving the attributes of the last one. So this was SceneSwap, an efficient framework for high-fidelity phase swapping. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and see you in the next research paper summary by martechpost.com.